Our objectives were to find out whether Singapore Mandai Zoo prioritizes the welfare of their animals above profit and if Singapore Mandai Zoo is effective in their goals of preservation and education. We think that the zoo is necessary because zoos protect animals and educate the public. However, it is not necessary because zoos are commercialized and it is an inhumane source of entertainment. From our research portfolio, we concluded that all zoos are unethical. The definition of an ethical zoo to us is when they properly monitor animal rights as well as their physical and psychological needs. The vision of the zoo is to influence people to value and preserve the animals. The mission is to provide meaningful experience to the public to enjoy and protect biodiversity. We focused on three main areas to assess if the Singapore Zoo is necessary. Education. Zoos serve to educate the public on these animals. Visiting the zoo as a school excursion is a common experience for most of us when we were younger, as it is well recognized as an interactive method of learning. Animal welfare. Zoos often mimic the animal's natural habitat in their man-made enclosures, but due to limited space and funds, the quality of the habitats are compromised. Singapore is evidently a small country, hence, providing adequate space for their zoo animals is definitely a challenge. Conservation Zoos also serve to save and protect endangered species by sheltering them from the damages done by mankind. The zoos also breed these animals in hopes of increasing their numbers and eventually reintroducing them back into the wild. We headed down to the zoo to find out what people think. Why are you visiting the zoo? Because uh, I am a tourist from Australia and I thought I'd come along today because we came for the uh, orangutan breakfast this morning. Uh, we're visiting the zoo because it's got a big conservation message which we quite like, so yeah. Uh, we came from Perth to, to Singapore for, to visit our relatives and uh, we are, Singapore Zoo is always very well known. Yeah, so every time we are in Singapore, we would like to pay a visit to the zoo. As well as my daughter is very interested in animals. Yes. Yeah, the kids are interested in animals, so we thought we'd bring them here. Because we are in Singapore and we like zoos. So we are in Singapore and we like zoos. 小孩子比较喜欢动物嘛，然后他就喜欢大象，所以说刚刚来看那个大象表演。Can you share something interesting that you learned from your visit? Hmm, that orangutans are four to five male human strength. Oh yeah, the elephants um, can crush a coconut with their feet, which is amazing. I've learned that Singapore Zoo is really big into helping um, animals that have been sort of freed that have been taken by smugglers and poachers. This time round, we realised that the land of giant uh, was built and we thought that it was very uh, enterprising of Singapore to do it because all the giants were put together, so it's very thematic, you know. Whereas in Perth, we were just talking that they wouldn't do such thing. So we realised that, uh, yeah, Singapore company is a very enterprising in that sense, very creative. Which enclosure is your favourite and why? Um, I really like the giraffes, the giraffes were cool. Um, and I love the orangutans this morning because they were so close. I quite liked the, like the rainforest enclosure you could walk through, like the lemurs and things, of, things like that. So far in the land of giants, we, we enjoy everything. Okay, I guess she missed the polar bears, monkeys, and <laughs> she was just very fascinated with the white tiger. All kangaroos and all animals, actually. Do you think animals are happy being kept in cages? That's a great question. Um, I think they appear to be happy here in comparison to other zoos that we've been to, um, but they seem to be very well looked after here, and I can see it's very green and feels very natural habitat, but I don't know what's behind closed doors, so it could be something different. I think in cages it's not, but I don't think, I don't consider the way uh, Singapore does it, the animals are kept in, and yeah, I, I think Singapore do a very good job. Yeah, I think, I believe the animals are happy. Of course, if you compare the animals to the wild, I think, of course, they'll be happier. But the animals here are very well fed. Mm. 
Only some of them, I think. Yeah, not all. The smaller ones, I think, are okay. The bigger ones, maybe not. What do you think about animals being kept in cages? I don't know about other... Uh, maybe some less developed country, they do, kept, they do keep the animals in cages. Uh, but I think definitely that's a little bit on the cruel side. Yeah, they are not meant to be kept in cages. I think they are not here. I think if they're born in the zoo, it's fine because they're not used to the wildlife, but capture them just for the zoo purpose, I don't think it's a good idea. Um, I think if it's because an, an animal is endangered, then it's got a purpose, but if it's just for people to view it, then it's not a good idea. What do you think is the purpose of the zoo? Jeez, um, to maintain the health of the animals and to make sure they reproduce and don't become extinct, I guess, yeah, and for the enjoyment. This zoo is big into conservation and it's about helping um, raise money to then help wildlife out in the wild that needs to be preserved. I think just to encourage people to enjoy animals themselves, nature, and not to be so focused on products, but to be focused on nature. I think the purpose of the zoo should be also helping the conservation of the animals, so like with breeding programs or anything like that. It's to see all the animals in one place which is so difficult to find in, in regular places all over the world. Here is different, I think. Do you think zoos are doing a good job at conserving animals? Depends which zoo. Some zoos are, some zoos aren't. And I know back home um, in Australia Zoo, they do a really great job at, um, I guess, making sure that animals are treated well and out of captivity and stuff like that. So. I think they're quite OK. They're doing their best. Lah. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of zoos are doing a very good job, but I don't think all zoos are, no. After visiting the zoo, we sat down to collate our findings and this is our analysis. At every enclosure, there are information boards educating visitors about that animal. At the end of every animal show or feeding, they would emphasize that zoo animals were taken into zoos because of man-made problems such as deforestation, poaching, and human encroachment. Encroachment means an invasion of space, and in this case, it means that humans are taking over the animal's natural habitats for their own interests. They also emphasized this point after the animal show that the dogs involved were previously mistreated or bought illegally online and was confiscated by the airport. These dogs were then adopted by the Singapore Zoo. Singapore Zoo made the effort to educate the visitors, but it is effective only to a certain extent. At the polar bear enclosure, a board explaining Inuka's behaviour is mounted on the wall. The polar bear is not swimming in circles because she was stressed out, but is doing so because she loves interacting with the audience and exercising. There was also an aircon then that she could seek shelter in if she was feeling too hot. Polar bears in the wild live up to 15 to 18 years. However, Inuka is currently 26 years old in 2018. This shows that animals in the zoos are well taken care of and may even lead long lives. At the White Tiger Enclosure, we interviewed a zookeeper named Mohan. Okay, my name is Mohan and she's Lin. We are carnivore keepers and we are also the caretakers of the white tigers. How long have you been working in the zoo? I've been working here for 18 years. One is climate change, secondly is poaching, and thirdly is human encroachment. Human population is growing and we are moving into their habitat. And we are destroying their homes and animals are moving towards where human settlements are. And what happens? Human animal conflict. So our role is to not just to take care of the animal day in day out, but is to also look at the welfare of the animals. Is there any difference between Singapore zoos and other zoos in other countries? Yes, there's differences. Uh, but what I can say to summarize is that different zoos, they manage their collection differently. 
So what I can tell you is how we work. Singapore Zoo, we believe in conservation, education. Uh, can I ask you a few questions regarding the white tiger? Yeah, sure. Um, these come from Indonesia, right? They were born in a zoo in Indonesia. And All white tigers are Bengal tigers. So Bengal tigers are found there. Yeah. They happen to be the same name. Do you know a bit about the process of how they uh, reproduce these tigers to get white tigers? Okay, a long time ago, 100 years ago, there were nine species of tigers. And there were more than 100,000 tigers. So of all of the nine subspecies, the Indian subcontinent species, which are the Bengal tigers, had the biggest population. So for you to have a different colored uh, tiger is higher in India than anywhere else because there are so many. So what happened was a long time ago when there were kings in India, he went for a hunt, he saw a white cup. He took the white cup in and kept it the, as a pet. So in order for you to have recessive genes, the male, it was a male by the way, the white cup, it has to be mated with a normal orange tiger. So in order to have recessive genes, it has to, the cups has to carry the male's genes. So he mated with a normal orange, there was a little orange, and then the male mated with his daughter, now the gene is even stronger now. And then finally when he mated with, the, with his granddaughter, there were a litter of whites. So all the whites that you see in any zoos, in any social media, all came from that particular male and that litter of tigers. Um, what are the like, success rates for this kind of white tigers? Success rates, well, okay, like I said, we believe in uh, animal welfare. And it's wrong to uh, breed white tigers because of two reasons. One, there's no white tigers in a while. And secondly, they have recessive genes. They're all inbred. Success rate is, okay, there are private zoos where they breed uh, white tigers and most of the cubs are born with deformities and their lifespan can be short. Uh, previously before this pair we had three other siblings and uh, they did develop uh, health issues in the later part of their, of their life and they had to be humanely euthanized because we, we know that the animal was suffering and and their, uh, their life, their welfare state was compromised. So we had to make the right decision by uh, euthanizing them. Um, do you think it's morally right to breed these white tigers? No. Um, then do you perhaps know why like, Singapore breeds these kind of white tigers? Okay, though they are white, yes, we are not breeding them. They hold a very important role. They are actually an uh, ambassador, an ambassador to their species because though they are white, they are still Bengal tigers. And through them, we educate visitors. Mohan said that white tigers are a representative of their own species, the Bengal tigers. Mohan also agreed with us on the point that they should not exist in the wild because they are unnatural. And despite Singapore having one of the best zoos in the world, with great resources and facilities, there are still and will always be some problems that money cannot fix. However, we cannot deny the human and animal communication barrier which may result in built-up frustration. And this may result in impulsive actions. Unfortunately, we managed to capture some of these upsetting moments on camera. According to Mohan, he stated that if the animals were to be reintroduced into the wild in an unprotected zone, the animals would suffer. These animals are better off being kept in the zoo because of human interventions like poaching, 
and deforestation. Introduce species back to the wild. The area that you're going to release must be protected. If it's not protected, you might as well keep the animal here and continue conservation and education. Both tourists and locals share the same sentiments when comparing Singapore Zoo to other zoos. Uh, I haven't gone to other zoos. I've gone to Perth zoos. Oh, uh, I've gone to, uh, we have gone to uh, Thailand Zoo. Yeah. Is there a definitely, definitely. Singapore Zoo, from these three zoos, I think Singapore Zoo is still the best. Yeah. Maybe here they are for sure, but not the others. Because here you see the environment of each animal and the others is not the same. I think only Singapore has been doing this so well. Comparing to some other zoos I visited overseas, like at least it's sort of like a open environment for the animals to roam around. So I guess comparing to other zoos over like other countries, then they are pretty happy, I guess. In a nutshell, Singapore Zoo is ethical to a certain extent. According to tourists, our zoo is one of the best compared to the other countries that they have visited. Here, the animals have adequate space to roam and their enclosures mimic that of their habitats in the wild. Singapore Zoo aims to inspire people to value and conserve biodiversity by providing meaningful and memorable wildlife experience. Our objectives were to find out whether Singapore Mandai Zoo prioritizes the welfare of their animals above profit, and if they are effective in their goals of preservation and education. After our research, we conclude from our findings that the Singapore Zoo does indeed prioritize the welfare of animals and is effective in preserving the endangered and vulnerable species. Even though it is upsetting that these animals do not have the same freedom as they would in the wild, we cannot deny that zoos are still necessary. They help conserve these animals and educate the public about problems such as poaching, deforestation and human encroachment. With that, we would like to alter our stance. In our research portfolio, we said that zoos are not ethical. The Singapore Zoo to a large extent is ethical in its treatment towards animals.